how you been feeling the last couple of days since Sunday? Uh, feeling good. Ankle a little bit swollen, but just getting ready. Is there any way you can't see yourself playing on Friday? Um, no, I'll force myself. What have you seen from Utah State so far? Uh, I know they have a big man, uh, player of the year, uh, very active in their offensive sets and defensively, uh, very engaged within their the play style, really. Uh, we know he's a factor, uh, but we also know there's many other players on that, that team that can also get going. Man, when you think about the work to get to this moment and yeah. now what's potentially ahead of you here and yeah. starting this Friday, what goes through your mind? Uh, everything I've been through, really. Uh, not only within TCU, but just my life. You know, everything that transpired leading up to this point and how we finally got here and how we're, we're trying to build something, I think, I think about it all. Man, what, what do you think separates good teams of what you guys have been the last three seasons and great teams that make it to the Sweet 16 and beyond? Uh, you know, resilience. I think that's huge, especially within this tournament because you have so many great players on all these different teams in this tournament. You have great coaches, but the team that's the most resilient, that could compete uh, every single game, game in, game out, uh, I think that's, that's what's going to make a deep run. How do you think that experience from these last two tournament runs can help you guys be that more, be the most resilient team night in yeah, and night out of the tournament? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, we've been here for the past two years, and I was actually talking with a, uh, with a friend, and it's how TCU is kind of becoming a new norm of becoming playing in March Madness. Mm -hmm. and, and the experience that me and my group have that when we first came here, and now we have those jitters out of the ways, and, and we can really just focus on where we're at in that moment. I know you're a senior, and you got the other seniors on the team. This yeah. could, be, could be your last game. Yeah. What have you talked to the other seniors about? How are you guys going into this game mindset-wise? Uh, I tell them that it won't be our last game. Uh, we will not go out like that. Uh, we're going to compete, we're going to fight, and we're going to make it to the next round. That's, that's what I told them. Uh, as a fan, uh, do you get to watch the tournament, or do you want to watch the tournament, or do you guys yeah. just focus, or do you just focus on the task at hand? Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit of both. You know, I'm a I'm a basketball junkie. So regardless of I'm playing, I love to watch the game, uh, see other players, see other teams, uh, what they're doing, uh, seeing their defenses, how I could potentially attack those defenses. Uh, so I like to watch the game, but I also like to live in the moment. So I know that we have Utah State coming up. So I've been really locked in on on their team and, and what we need to do. So because you guys play late, do you watch games earlier in the day or is it just about? Uh, I do recovery and watch games. So usually I'm in the recovery booths in my bed, uh, watching the game in the, in the hotel. Hey man, talk to me about living in the moment. This, mm -hmm. this is what you guys play for. This is such a special time. Talk to me about feeling that and the emotion of that. You know, uh, living in the moment is so huge, right? Because a lot of players, their season ended last week. And right now, what we need to do is live in this moment and be thankful and grateful that we have the opportunity to compete in another game. So just embracing this moment, soaking it all in, and, and living in this moment is, is what it's all about. Dixon, said, <clears throat> Dixon says he's confident you guys have kind of turned the corner defensively. He's kind of yeah. feel the same way at the Kansas City. Yeah, I feel as if our team is finally hitting that stride. Uh, I feel like we're trending in the right direction, uh, both defensively and offensively. I know last game against Houston, uh, offensively we struggled, but we also got around 30 more shots than they did, and we feel confident that we can not only dominate the glass and get more shots, but to continuously do that. On the defensive end, I feel as if we're more in sync, we're more commutative, uh, we talk more. Uh, and we just get this sense of more urgency because we know at the end of the day, defense is going to games. How challenging is it year over year in the transfer portal era to have new faces join the team, faces leave the team, and just consistently build that chemistry? Uh, yeah. Does it feel like it's happening more frequently in the middle of the season now than yeah. it has the past? Uh, I feel like it's happening throughout the season. You know, we see guys transfer late. We see guys leave teams late. Uh, we see guys uh, go to teams early. I mean, it's, it's all over the place, but those teams that can gel uh, like how we've been able to gel over the past three years because a lot of new faces have been in, in and out of this building, you know. Uh, when we started up two years ago, we had a whole new team. Uh, last year, a lot of players left, and we had a whole new team this year. Uh, and I think just being able to gel uh, not only as teammates but as as friends, really, because uh, friends and, and off the court is what really brings you all together. So I think that's important. At the end of his
his comments here, Coach Dixon was talking about the honor that it has been to coach you and this mm. group of guys that have been here for a while. Tell me about the reverse side of that relationship mm. and just what it is meant to be uh, coached by, by Jamie Dixon. Um, my relationship with Jamie Dixon is, is so special to me. Uh, he brought me in uh, with a game plan. Uh, we sat down, we had long discussions of how my career will be at TCU. Uh, he's taught me the ropes. I've known his system, like he created the system. Uh, he's taught me so many things, uh, not only about basketball, but about life, you know, about building relationships, uh, about engaging within the community, about just engaging in life. And he's taught me so many things that I could take away for the rest of my life. So I will always value the, the relationship I have with Jamie Dixon. Yeah, he's doing this for yeah. Does that instill confidence in you guys? That yeah. You know he's been here. You know? Yeah, you know it instills confidence with me and the other guys because he's well respected within this basketball community. I mean, you go down the list. He's been doing this longer than I've been alive. He's been, he breathes the game of basketball. He sleeps. He, he embraces everything college basketball or basketball itself, really. And you know he puts in a lot of a lot of work. And and at the end of the day, he cares. I mean. I see him here. If I come in late at night, I'm going to see him here. If I come in early in the morning, I'm going to see him here. Uh, he works just as hard as the players, and, and I think it, it shows with his well-respected as he is in this in this game. Have you pictured yourself being a champion this year? I picture myself being a champion every night. You know, that's my dream. Uh, that's my goal. Uh, I go to sleep knowing that we have full – capability of, of accomplishing that, right? So I think about it all the time. Anything else for you, man? Did you talk to your brother this week as he wished you well? Did you get time yeah, on this tournament? Yeah, yeah. I talk to my little brother uh, every day, uh, really. Uh, he tells me all the time how proud of me he is, and I tell him all the time that I'm going to see you next year, right? So we, t we have those communication talks all the time.